Yeah, I've never seen so many new faces uh, in my past visit, I must say. And uh, it's a great joy to see uh, you're building a bigger building. I think there are more rooms, you know, you need to bring more people. Uh, we need to pray that God would uh, continue to extend our heart, you know, big heart, huh? so that we include more people in the kingdom of God. But this morning, I'd like to answer the question that uh, you have given to me, you know, when you said, uh, why do I need God? That this morning I say I need God because He's the light of the world uh, in the Chinese service because uh, He light up my life, you know, He give me direction and continue to uh, guide me uh, from here to where eternity is. But this morning I like to answer the English congregation in that, you know, I need God because He's the only one that can forgive sin, no one else. Uh. And because of that, you see, I find joy uh, in my life. Uh. Yeah, this passage of scripture I'm going to uh, uh, talk on is taken from Psalms 32. But in order to uh, understand these Psalms fully and appreciate what God has done, we need to go back to uh, the history or the background of this passage of scripture, which I shall do uh, uh, shortly. There was a great preacher about 100 years ago in Australia. His name is uh, v uh, Wilbur Chapman. Wilbur Chapman actually. A uh, guy who constantly preach on sin, you see, a series, you know, week after week, week after week. One day his elder couldn't stand it anymore. And he went to the pastor's home and I said, Pastor, you know, the, the, you talk about sin is so, you know, terrible, you know, the young people, what would they think about sin, you know? And he said, can you tone down a little bit? <laughs> Don't talk so much of sin, you see. Nice, <laughs> So this pastor heard that, he didn't say a word, he walked to his pantry and then he found a little bottle or a little can of uh, rat medicine. You know, you, you, uh, you have rats around, you know, poison rat, you see. So and then he went into his uh, little drawer in his study, he picked up a sticker and then he put down, you know, uh, peppermint essence, you know, <laughs> essence of peppermint and then he stuck it to that bottle. Well, I think today we try to do that. We have different labors uh, for sin. Let me try and see what it is. Okay, good. Uh, we try to uh, actually lower, you know, uh, this how men look at sin and how God look at sin, you see. Uh, men call it an accident, you know, but God said it's an abomination, uh, serious. Uh. And sometimes we look at sin, you know, say, oh, it's just a blunder, right? And then we say, the God said, oh, it's not, you know, it's a for me, you know. oh, what a chance, you know, look at our top leader here, you know, 2.6 billion, <laughs> what an opportunity, man, boy, you know, I better get it, you know. uh, it's a chance, you know, don't miss it once in a lifetime, you know, opportunity, chance, you know, but God said no, you know, it's a deliberate choice, when you see, you see, it's not chance, it's a choice that you have made, you see, and then men say, you know, oh, it's just an error, lah, you know, I make a mistake, huh? and when God said it's an enmity, and men say now, Squirrel will say, well, what a fascinating thing going to uh, orgy parties, you know. But God said that is fatality. And men say, you know, well, it's just an infirmity, but God said it's an iniquity. And men, when men say, you know, well, what a luxury, I'm enjoying what I want, you see. But God said that is, uh, what? Leprosy. Leprosy, uh, very serious. Uh. And uh, men have a skill wheel of uh, saying, you know, well, it's my liberty, man. I have freedom. I do what I like, but God said, no, it's lawlessness. And man said, you know, well, it's just a trifle, a little, little thing, don't make a... More up a mountain, whatever, you know. Yeah, then but God said, what a tragedy. And man said, you know, no, it's just a mistake, law. don't make it such a big thing. Huh? But God said, no, it's madness. Let me say there is a weakness, you know, but God said it's willfulness. I mean, deliberately huh, do things against God, you see. So sometimes, you know, uh, I'm still trying to see whether I have to point here. <laughs> yeah, the more that you make the labor, you see, the more dangerous you make the poison. So please don't put the uh, terrible or poisonous thing in Coca Cola bottle in your home if you have kids. You know. uh, they think it's Coca Cola, but you can kill your child. Whatever labor you want to make it, you see. So that's something 
uh, very dangerous. Huh? I hope it's uh, moving. I don't have to keep looking back. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the uh, scripture tells us. Yeah. Then let me go back uh, again here and uh, let's look at a passage today. You know, to understand Psalm 32, actually, we have to go back to the history of this particular psalm. And you have to go back to the Old Testament where David was king. You know, uh, uh, he had been doing so well as a king, you see, winning war after war, you know, and now, you know, he can just lay back, send his general out in the battle front, you know, and uh, one afternoon he just took a nap. You know, after the nap, he just walked around in his flat roof and uh, surveyed his kingdom, you know, all of a sudden, he saw a beautiful lady out there, you know, taking a bath. And his mind started to work. And you sign, people say, <coughs> and he said, Where's she found her? He sent her over. Isn't a good time? Nobody knows it. And Bathsheba went home, you know, before too long. He said, What are you, huh? <laughs> uh, I'm expecting, you know, the king to gain the work again, you know. Wait, what shall I do, huh? The husband is away. How can a uh, husband have a baby? You see, impossible. Well, the king is very smart. Very wise king, and he thought, you know, he sent the husband back from the battle front. You remember Uriah? He was right there, you know, sent him back, you know, and treat him like a, you know, noble, you know, have a meal with him, and ask him go back and enjoy yourself as a family man. You see, but these men say, how can I enjoy at home, you know, while God's army is out there in the battle front? They say, I will never do things like that, and he slept at with the palace guard. You know, and the king was saying, oh, what can I do? I thought I would solve the problem, you see. All he did is just go home, you know. And I, I will hide my sin, you right? know, no need to. The king was very troubled. He thought again, you know. Do I him again tonight, you know? Give him good food, make him drunk, you know. Go home. And this fellow again sat with the guard and said, well, you know, he's to meet fellow. <laughs> In the eyes of men, isn't it? <coughs> he laughed this guy, huh? Hey, I died, I don't want to go home. The king, what shall I do? The king then, you know, asked him, you know, you go back to battlefield. Huh? You, you don't know how to enjoy life. He wrote a death sentence letter, and he said, pass it to Joab, his general. And that letter said, you know, put him to the thickest battlefront, you see. Rain is most dangerous, withdraw your, your men, you know. And I get rid of him. Now he did exactly that. And then when Joab sent back the news, you know, this time many of our men died, you know, because he was very angry. But then he told his messenger, said, Uriah also died. Huh? He was a little bit happier because that was his plan, you see. Uriah also died, I got rid of him. Well, that's the, the background of this uh, Psalm 32, you see. And, uh, well, he was trying to cover up, you see. But God raised up prophet by the name of Nathan. Now, Old Testament king is very powerful. Even here, you know, people are not very powerful, you know. You check up banyak, uh, sedition, no? <laughs> check up some more, you disappear, you know. Now, you cannot say to the king, you say, hey king, you have committed adultery, you gone, you see. But God raised up a very wise servant, you see, Nathan went there and uh, he told a story, he didn't say, the, you know, the story was very simple, you know. He said there's a family, you know, a poor man have a one lamb, you know, treat this lamb like his own daughter, you know, eat, you know, not treat. But this rich man have a lot of cattle, a lot of things. But one day, you see, there was a foreigner came to this rich man's home. And the Middle East custom is hospitality. Yesterday, the children was learning one of the lessons is that, what lesson is that, Ahoy Hospitality, lesson one number. <laughs> I forgot the number. <laughs> and he said, look, they have great hospitality, sense of hospitality. They give the best, you see. This man didn't give his best, but the best of this poor man, you see. When King, heard, King David heard this story, he was so enraged, this man ought to die, you know. And then Nathan said, you see, you are the man. And that's where he started to confess, you see. He didn't deny it. 
But he confessed. And this is what he said in Psalm 51, the background. He said, against you, you only have I seen you know, and done what is evil in your sight. Surely you desire truth in the inner parts. You teach me wisdom in the innermost place. Cleanse me with hyssop and I will be clean. Watch me and I will be whiter than snow. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit in me. Do not cast me from your presence or take your Holy Spirit from me. The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart. O God, you will not despise. Now King David didn't deny his sin, but he owned up his sin. That's the greatness of this king. You see. I think when we sin, you see, we try to cower. It's just like you have ten pots, but you only have eight covers or nine covers. You no matter how you cover it, it just pop up. You see. <laughs> but that's the big point of Moses. Huh? Moses was a great guy, you know, but when he buried the guy he killed, you know, but his toe is sticking up. <laughs> that's how sin is. It? Sin has a way to come out uh, to, to haunt you. It doesn't matter where you go, you know. And that's where, after he's confessed his sin, that's where he come up with this Psalm 32, you see. Psalm 32, please turn to your Psalms, I'm going to talk about that. Blessed is he whose transgressions are forgiven, whose sins are covered. Blessed is the man whose sin the Lord does not count against him, and, who, and in whose spirit is no deceit. When I kept silent, my bones wasted away. Through my groaning all day long. For day and night, your hand is heavy upon me. My strength was set as the heat of the summer. Then I acknowledged my sin to you and did not cover up my iniquity. I say, I will confess my confess of transgressions to the Lord and you forgive the guilt of my sin. You are my hiding place. You will protect me from trouble. Surround me with songs of deliverance and I will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go. I will counsel you and watch over you. Do not be like a horse or a mule which have no understanding but must be controlled by the bit of riddle or they will not come to you. Many are the woes of the wicked. But the Lord's unfailing love surrounds the man who trusts Him. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for the reading of your word. We pray, O oh Lord, you will speak to us through this psalm this morning. Why we need you, we find joy in forgiveness. Speak to our heart, O oh Lord. Reveal to us the recesses in the deep recesses of our heart, the subconsciousness of sin that we put so far away. Lord, may your light of the Holy Spirit shine upon this thing. And not only let us see, but we will confess our sin before you this morning. And make our lives right with you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Yeah. David actually, having experienced the forgiveness and blessing of God, you see, following his confession of sin, he instructs others to walk in the right path. Yeah. The, if you look at this psalm, it's a very beautiful psalm. They say, you know, uh, joyful, happy, and exuberant, you see, is a person when our sins are forgiven. Why we need God, you know? Because sinful people don't have joy, you see. There's no happiness. You cannot find life is exciting, you see. Because sin lingers in your life. But the uh, psalms. 32 verses 1 and 2, you see, few words are being described what sin is all about. The first word is transgression, you see. Transgression means uh, God have a boundary, you see. You step over that boundary, you see. That's what sin is all about. Or we cross the line. Or simply we say sin is defiance. We defy being God. Uh, that's what uh, one expect of sin. And then another word he used was, uh, used was uh, sin is a uh, missing the mark. You see. The idea is that he speaks of a bang or crooked arrow that cannot fly straight. You, you try to aim at it, but somehow we always miss it. Isn't that what happened to our life? Well, I want to be good, I want to be this, I want to stay away from my sinful ways. 
But no matter how we do it, it is, we miss it. Well, sin and other things uh, as effect. Our life is effective uh, without God. Yeah. The, the, the scripture went on to say, you see, uh, the word, another word for sin, you see, uh, is uh, transgression. Uh, the word transgression means to step over a boundary or to, uh, did I uh, say it wrongly? Sorry, I missed it. Uh, iniquity. Uh, I mean, iniquity means uh, a pain or distorted. Uh, it refers to the warped or distorted nature, bang on evil. Uh, how many of us are uh, parents teach us to do wrong things? <laughs> Nobody. No. All of us try to teach them good, right? I thank God just have a 10 month old, we're going to be 11 months in a few days' time, a grandson. More and more I discovered a sinful streak on the little child. You see? And I wonder, you know, where did he get it wrong? Huh? Show you an example. Huh? You know, the child can be angry, you know, stubborn, huh? won't listen. Huh? That's what it's all about. Sin is that defiant against God. You know, you don't listen, you see. And this child, you know, you can feed the milk on the child. You know? This is one thing, you know. And uh, don't cry, you know. Ah, louder. You know? <laughs> uh, it, it's terrible, you know. I have, uh, just a few weeks of experience where well, my daughter uh, uh, went for a short uh, six months to Australia. She's leaving tonight. I may not meet her at the airport. Uh, just two, every two months, she'll fly back a week to be with the baby and the husband. Uh, well, we, we are taking care of the, the baby with the maid. You know, the baby sleep in our room. But I tell you at night, you know, don't, it's just like our prayer. I mean, you know, I know in the day of the night, get it's so what you say, the, you know, the, well, that's what it is, you see, sin is uh, uh, defiance and uh, it came in, you know, when a child, you know, distorted, you know, wow, you know, uh, distortion. And then the last word sin is the uh, scripture use is that, uh, 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 the, the next slide, uh, the girl, I talk about uh, deceitful, refer to dishonest and deceptive. Sin is basically deception uh, in that sense you see. so you find that uh, these terrible scenes rock the joy of our life uh, and can be taken off the good news is that you see David have sinned against God and you know that every sin is planned no, by the way isn't it he saw he made plan to bring this lady and when he have sinned he tried to cover it up that's how sin works you see it's beautifulness uh, it doesn't just happen like that by chance, you see. But you deliberately plan, you choose to do that, you see. So transgression can be forgiven. The idea is uh, uh, means to be lifted up uh, or bear away. You see. When you confess your sin, God lifts that burden up from your back. In other words, it says that uh, sin can be covered up, you see, or concealed, you see, put out of sight from God. You see. That's a second idea. And then iniquity can be written off. This is like a, many of you are accountants here. Uh, you know, you ipi kosiao in Chinese, I write off this debt. That's what they mean. You know, uh, so sin can be also removed, or guilt or gall can be removed, free from all spiritual deception. Satan continues to deceive us. So David actually. David actually have experienced uh, the grace of God, uh, uh, experienced the depth of sin and the heights of God's grace. Uh, it, it, God has been so gracious to him. Isn't that, this is true with all of us. Because we come to know God, you know, that's why we need him, you see. If not, you see, uh, it will be terrible. But this, how David described himself, verses 3 and 4, you see. When we hide our sins, when we keep quiet about our sins, you see, what will happen? Well, here he said, you know, uh, David lived with unconfessed sin in his life. He will experience few terrible things. Huh? If you read the scripture again, uh, he said that, uh, well, uh, my bones wasted away. <laughs> Have you seen people suffering huh, in sickness, you see? 
after a week, two weeks, two months, you know, literally they are just bones, skin and bones, you know, wasting away your body. That's what it is. When you sin against God, you see, you keep quiet about your sin. David, uh, Psalm 32 says that, you see, and then he said, God's hand was heavy upon me. Now, what does that mean? Huh? Normally, uh, when children, uh, you grow up uh, in a home, uh, parents will say, son, that's not a good thing to do, no, don't do it. But you won't listen to what your dad will say again. Son, don't do that again. <laughs> and then you don't listen again, you know. Heavy hand comes around, right? <laughs> God's hand huh, is heavy on you. Huh? That's what it means. God is not going to let you go. No place to hide, my friend. Then he went on to say, you see, my strength was separated. You see, people who live in sin, you see, they have no motivation, they have no strength to do what they want to do. Not that you don't know what to do, but somehow you don't have the energy to do, you see. Because you are so down, it's just moaning and groaning, that's what it is. And he said, you know, groaning all day long, you know. And there was this guy, actually, at night sleeping time. In fact, you read other Psalms, they will say, you know, I wet my pillow with my tears, you know. Literally, if I translate, you see. He was crying, he was groaning, uh, emotionally disturbed. Huh? Physically worn out, you know. That's when people sin. I work with all sorts of people over 40 years as a pastor. I work with drug addicts, I work with prisoners. You find that a lot of people, when guilt-ridden people, you see, they were robbed of joy, they were robbed of the uh, literary light before them. No, they are living in darkness, you see, and continue searching for light. Huh? And the Bible tells us, you say, uh, when you keep quiet about your sin, when you just, or rather the word, when you hide your sin, will be a better way. You know, uh, in fact, we have perfected that art, the many of us. Huh? We, nothing happened, you know. We just walk around, you know, with the mask. I'm okay, you know. Uh, we laugh, we joke, you know, as if nothing happens. I discover as a church we are not dealing much with our sinfulness in the church. Uh, one of the sin that is very rampant in the church today is adultery. Serious sin, uh, but we don't, don't deal with it. But I hope we will begin to be, take a different view of it. Uh, and People go home, you know, adulterous men or women go home. They go home that nothing happened. They say, honey, darling, you know. No, nothing. But actually, they are far apart from each other. I tell you, I'm dealing with Christian couples that I'm talking about. Serious, you know, leaders, deacons, elders, pastors today. We find that, you know, our sin is so rampant, that's why God cannot bless our family, God cannot bless our church, neither our nation, because it's sin written, you see. How does that affect David, by the way? If I were to uh, uh, describe David, you see, he was uh, just a great soldier, you see. Uh, when sin actually wrecked his life, you see, a life wrecked by sin, uh, let me describe. He was a great warrior, you see, but now a soldier who had lost his strength. Now, David is a very talented guy, you know, like Chris can play the guitar and sing. You remember when King Saul was in trouble, he looks for David, you know, and come and sing, you know, and then he quite, quite go and sleep, you know, because of the lovely music, you see. But now, you know, when sin ridden person, no more song to sing, no more poems to write, you see. See, which will I have? No more inspiration, you can say. Well, he was a great saint of God, but he has lost his satisfaction. My dear brothers and sisters, my dear friends, don't hide your sin, you know. Because when you do, you see, he, uh, you sacrifice peace, joy, contentment on the altar of sinfulness and temporary pressure. Uh, definitely, David paid a very high price and for low living, unfortunately. Don't do that, uh, please, you know. And, uh, you know, there's no joy for the child of God to sin. No? But God will not leave you alone. God continue to speak to you. Perhaps God is speaking to you this morning. How does God speak to us? He say He will speak to us through the Holy Spirit. God's voice uh, speak to you. 
to the Holy Spirit. Maybe nobody knows, you know, but God knows. And God speaks to us through chastisement. God's hand, heavy on you. That's how God works sometimes. Sometimes God uses pain. You know. Pain is God loudspeaker. It's just like a dashboard in your car. The red sign just come out, you see. But many of us will still drive on. Don't, don't care about the red light. And then until the car will stall some man. But take note of the red light that God is shining on your heart this morning. If God's light revealing to you, you know, the sin in your life, I trust that you will begin to take note. Like David said, you know, Lord, I have sinned against you. Forgive my sin, you see. Well, God will also, sometimes when you don't listen, you see, God send you to an early grave. Serious, huh? Oh, that's a favor, God's favor to you. You don't have to suffer so long. Huh? Because you stay longer, you see, you disgrace God. That's God's favor. Well, a lot of sinful people huh? uh, don't enjoy too long. Huh? Yeah. David said, you know, then I acknowledge my sin to you and did not cover up my iniquity. I said, I will confess my transgression to you, Lord, and you forgive my guilt and my sin. Psalms 32 <coughs> verse 5 says that. They say, yeah. I'd like us just to pause a few moments. Uh, normally we don't do things, crazy things like that. But God is just speaking to you right now. Why don't we just close our eyes for a few seconds? You know, don't talk about someone else. But look at yourself, you see, your heart. Places that you have been hiding, you know, recesses of your heart. Nobody knows, you know. We don't like to open the heart closet of skeleton. But God is looking on you now. Maybe some of the things that we have done, you know, we have pushed it to our subconscious mind. So long, you know, we, we try to forget it. But this morning, God somehow revealed to you again. I'd like you to be frank with yourself and before God. And ask God to forgive your sin and cleanse you, you see. And when you do that, you see, the joy of the Lord will be restored to you. Yes, when Christians sin, we don't lose our salvation, but we lose the joy of our salvation. You have no strength, you have no power to serve God. You can jump around, do a lot of things for God, you know, but there's no power in your life. As we close our eyes, let us deal with ourselves and with God personally. And ask the Holy Spirit to convict you of sins in your life and confess them to God. Thank you, Lord, for hearing our prayers. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Now, the beautiful part of confession is that, you know, uh, you'll find freedom. Sin basically just tie you up, you see. Shackle you up uh, like a chain, you know. When sin is broken, you see, like the chain just let loose. You become a free person. Uh. So David stopped deceiving himself and the Lord just the, uh, uncovers and confess his sin uh, uh, to the Lord. Yeah, that's the turning point of uh, David's life actually. David, uh, don't hide anymore, you see. Uh, you look at uh, the verses, uh, use the same word actually, three different words uh, here uh, to describe, you see, uh, three times, in three different ways, you see. Uh, first he said, you know, Acknowledge or notice or observe, you see. Now, normally we don't acknowledge our sin, you see. Uh, we uh, didn't notice it. We just, it's okay, I've been doing this all my life. But now you take notice. Uh, oh, goodness, this is not pleasing to God. I want to acknowledge it, you see. Or know something or inform or announce and make known. That's the idea, you see. Now, of course, there are ways the Bible tells us. 
Like for example, let's say the husband and wife, you see, when they sin against one another, don't need to tell the whole church. Just two of us can separate the husband and wife. But let's say, you know what, you have done something in the cell group, you know, that you really hurt the people in the cell group. Again, you don't need to come out here in the church and announce it to the church. Just leave it to your cell group. That's good enough. Let's say around the past, they have done terrible things, you know. The building fund is so good, you know. I just say, oh, no money. Just let me use it for a while first, you know. And then later on, I couldn't put it back. In the first place, I've actually abused that fund. Then I have to come out and say, church, you know, I'm no more ready to be a pastor because uh, I have actually stolen the funds, you know. But of course, we like the cover that, no, I just know, I just borrow for the time being. You know? But actually, I've stolen the fund. Well, the fund doesn't belong to me, you see. Then I have to confess to the church openly. Now, the Bible also taught us, you see, let's say, but adultery is a very difficult thing to do, you see. Uh, you go to the home and talk to them, you know, they die, die, say, no, I don't do this thing, you know. Then I have to take two elders and go there, and then you know, they, they go. So, I mean, brother, you know, we urge you to. Confess your sin and get right with God and get right with the family. Your sin separates you from your wife, from your family. Sins hurts, right? Get right with God. You know? If he doesn't listen, then they have to bring it to the church. And the church will actually uh, discipline and even temporarily ask him to stop taking the Lord's Supper. And if you don't listen, you see, we will just actually ask him to leave. So there may be procedures, but uh, I think we need to make them. <coughs> so another word is so used is that not cover up, you see. He did not attempt to cover or conceal, you see. Bring something out in the open, not to pretend it didn't happen. You see? That's where the trouble comes, you see. Nobody knows, so I just pretend nothing happened. Every day you go home, you know, payday, I still give home. Uh, everything is normal, but actually it's not normal. Now we have just put on the mask, you know. Like. But now he said, you know, I am covering. Make it known, you know, openly, you know. And then the third idea is that I confess. Openly, I say, you know, I have, I'm sorry, I've done something wrong to you. Won't you forgive me? Not only to God, but to people that have been hurting because of my sinful ways of life. That's what David has done, you know. But that confession is also, uh, you know, I openly thank God for what He has done for my life. It's the same word, confess before the congregation in this sense, you see. So while well, we thank God, then it's turning point, you see. He's able to admit, you see. In natural fact, you see, that's how to kill adultery. Huh? Tell your family, huh? I have another woman out there. I have another man living, you know, out there. You see? Once you begin to open up, then you'll find that there are ways to solve your problem. The longer you hide that problem, the harder it becomes. And I say this is rampant today. Another type of a problem you don't have, well, I'm single, no wife, to, no husband to talk about. Uh, but have you been going to sites of pornography, young people, or even older men, older women today? Have you been hooked up with that, you know? Poisoning your mind. You need to own up and confess to God. Well, when you do that, you see the scripture say, you say, God forgive, right? So, or the burden being lifted up, the idea. Uh, you've, God forgive uh, the guilt of your sin, you see. Uh, the, the, the meaning is that the, have the, the burden of sin lifted. It's very interesting. Uh, I like to see, uh, uh, the only time that I have to see TV is just. Uh, not many times, but uh, just listen to the news. But when people sin, you see, they are very bold. Uh, they stand, they are not afraid of man, not afraid of God, you know. They look in the face, they do a lot of crazy things. And they, uh, this is, you see this in Malaysia. But when they are caught, when they are living up to the court, what do they do? Uh, they cover their face, they walk like this. <laughs> they were heroes before, you see. But when sin is discovered, is it become a burden? That's how sin works, huh? is a burden. But the sad thing is that people don't own up and ask for forgiveness. I like the guys who, who often uh, you know, say crazy things, racial things, you say, I didn't even say that, but it's all recorded in the <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, it's just a joke, right? <laughs> 
Well, that's how we actually uh, try to get off uh, the hook of sin, you see. But the Bible tells us, you see, uh, when you confess your sin, you see, God will move into the burden, you see. You can stand straight again in a sense. You, know? you can look at people in their eye. Huh? You don't have to hide anymore. Huh? So, before sin is confessed, you see, it's actually a very heavy burden on you. So, uh, you cannot hide. Unfortunately, there is no place to hide. Huh? Let's read this verse of scripture together. Can you please uh, join me? <coughs> the eyes of the Lord are in every place, keeping watch on evil and the good. Proverbs 15, verse 3. Read together the next verse. Uh, and there is no creature hidden from his sight, but all things are naked and open to the eyes of him, to whom we must give an account. Hebrews 4, 13. Yeah. In other words, you see, before God, you see, all of us are naked. What can you hide? Where can you run? No place to run, no place to run. Because He's an all knowing God. He is all what? Present. Present. All powerful. Where can you run? You see? Yeah. So, how do you deal with sin, you see, today? As we come to why we need God, is it because only God can forgive sin? There's no one else. So, but hiding or concealing sin is not the answer. You cannot hide, you cannot run. The only way to solve sin is to come before God and confess your sin to God. All of us can do that today. You know? And uh, David has uh, experienced the joy of forgiveness. Then he actually, in Psalms 51 verse 13, you know, he actually promised God, you see. What is that promise? Can we read together? Then I will teach rebels, and they will return to you. And that is the result of Psalms 32. Resulted in Psalms 32. Yeah. I'm going to spend a bit of time reflecting on this passage of scripture. Uh, Time running very fast. Huh? Let's reflect on this uh, passage of scripture. Uh, uh, David actually instruct and come the uh, and God's people how they may also go about, you know, change, living a different lifestyle, huh? acknowledging their sins to God. Yeah, the, actually, the last bit, six verse six to eleven. Actually, David, uh, that could be another sermon, but I don't think I will preach on that. But let me just give you the idea what uh, he was talking about. He was actually, you know, change your attitude towards sin and towards God. That's what repentance is all about. He said, you know, uh, begin to pray to God. Huh? And then uh, rest in God, learn from God, and <coughs> submit to God. Huh? Trust God and rejoice in God. You can do a Bible study or preaching sermon out there. But here, and he went on to say, don't be like a stubborn one. Mew. Sometimes you don't like to listen. Uh, how do you deal with a stubborn guy? You, put that, you can put him along quite easy. Yeah. Don't be stubborn. Huh? When God point out your sin today, say, confess your sins to him. Yeah. Now, let's come much uh, to the end part of the application. Let's reflect. Huh? Yeah. How does... Self-deceit uh, operate with sin to enslave you. How does that work in your own life? You say? Are you just uh, deceiving yourself? It's okay. It's just a white lie. You know? Small thing, you don't make a big time a big thing. Like I said, you know, while you skill will of sin, uh, this is a small mistake. Oh, okay. Or how does confession enable us to get free from sin? Have you truly confessed your sin this morning to God? Why do we sometimes resist the truth about ourselves? We always like to say, you know, uh, love is blind, you say, <laughs> but my neighbor can see. <laughs> uh, sometimes we have blind spot, uh, but someone tells you, you know, no, I don't do things like that. <laughs> Uh, what it takes uh, really 
for you to admit yourself that you have seen things. Nathan did something very fantastic, you know. Point out the sin. And that's a good thing. It's your friend, your spouse, your, you know, help you to do that. I think most of our reaction is to be defensive. Right? We deny, you know. We continue to deceive ourselves. We continue to deceive ourselves. So what does it take, huh? To get us to see the truth sometimes. The heavy hand of God. Or the megaphone of pain God used to give you. And then you start you know, turning to God. Or you quite quiet listen to God. Huh? And just change your ways you know, by repenting of your sin and turning to God. I think the greatest thing that the story of uh, uh, the prodigal son is it. Now all of us, when we do things, sin against God, you see guilt comes in immediately. Nobody knows but guilt is there. Now many of us would uh, like to just keep the guilt, you know, try to work around it, you see. Well, if you look at the prodigal son, you see, he's in the big star. Can you imagine that? Well, he knows that it's wrong, you know, but he's still in the big star, you see, living with uh, all the dirt around him. But he doesn't remain dead. He rehearsed, you know, if I go home, you know, what shall I say to my dad, you see? I ah, sin against God, sin against you, and then. But again, he didn't just do that, you see, but he got up from there, isn't it? And he started walking towards hope. That's what repentance is all about. Turning away from sin, turning to God. Huh? And I thank God. Huh? When he was start walking down the road, you see, his father saw the little shadow there and ran towards him. I think he has forgotten what to say, really. Huh? And no need to say, you know, the embrace of the father. I think God today is calling you home. Maybe some of us have been far away, running away from sin, with sin, living in sin. Nobody knows perhaps, but you know, God knows. When you come home, repent and turn back to God and be set free from sin. Not a nice subject to hear, but that's the reality that we struggle every day with sin. May God give us the strength and the power to live holy lives that please God. And as a mentor, you play the song. I have a song that uh, maybe some of us have heard this evening prayer. Uh, when I was young, uh, I like to uh, use songs for emotion. I like to sing and then you join me singing the following stanzas. Can you? Yeah, just let us uh, sing this uh, meditatively. This song says, If I have wounded some poor soul today, if I have caused one foot to go astray, if I have walked in my own willful way, dear Lord,
best time to come face to face with God. Are there hidden sins in your life? Will you make it right with God this morning? Before you go. One of the greatest sin is not surrendering yourself to God. Pride that prevents us to follow the will of God. I challenge you this morning. Come boldly before God and give your life to God. Lord, I'm willing to throw away my own beautiful way. May your will be my will today. I challenge you to rededicate your life to serve God every day wherever you are. If you make that decision this morning, I'd like you to stand up where you are. I want to pray for you. Don't look at anyone else. Or perhaps you are not a Christian. You have never accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Sin leads you to hell. But forgiveness leads you to joy and happiness now. And eternal life forever. You like to make that decision too. I invite you to stand. No matter where you are, just stand up quietly. I want to pray for you. Anyone? Father, we thank you for the sheer joy of just worshipping you this morning. 
continue to be with us, O oh Father, throughout every meaning of this day and throughout the new week to come. God, I want to pray for the church as we embark on a very uh, big, gigantic program of the building of a new church building. Lord, when we look at ourselves, we are so small. But yet, Lord, if we have you, we are not small. God, condition our mind with faith. And help us, O oh Lord, to build this building, build your people, the church, in faith, O oh Father. Thank you, O oh Lord, for listening to our prayer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please be seated. Yeah, I want to pray, I assure you, even though I'm uh, not here all the time, but I want to pray for your church project. I want to promise you I'll make a pledge. I don't have the money yet. Uh, what I'll do every year, I make what I call a faith pledge. Uh, I'll